padlocks are portable locks with a shackle that may be passed through an opening to prevent use, theft, vandalism, or harm. History There are padlocks dating to the Roman era, 500 BC a Euro 300 AD. They were known in early times by merchants traveling the ancient trade routes to Asia and China. Padlocks have been used in China since the late Eastern Han Dynasty. According to Hong Senyan, director of the National Science and Technology Museum, early Chinese padlocks were mainly key-operated locks with splitting springs, and partially keyless letter combination locks. Padlocks were made from bronze, brass, silver, and other materials. The use of bronze was more prevalent for the early Chinese padlocks. Padlocks with spring time mechanisms have been found in York, England, at the Jorvik Viking settlement, dated 850 AD. During this period between 850 AD and the early 1000 AD was when the name padlock was coined. It was contrived during this period to initially hold livestock within its quarters of the paddock, whereby the word pad was derived and applied to form the current word. Smokehouse locks, designed in England, were formed from wrought iron sheet and employed simple lever and wood mechanisms. These locks afforded little protection against forced and surreptitious entry. Contemporary with the smokehouse padlocks and originating in the Slavic areas of Europe, screw key padlocks opened with a helical key that was threaded into the keyhole. The key pulled the locking bolt open against a strong spring. Padlocks that offered more key variants were the demise of the screw lock. Improved manufacturing methods allowed the manufacture of better padlocks that put an end to the smokehouse around 1910. Around the middle of the 19th century, Scandinavian style locks, or polem locks, invented by the eponymous Swedish inventor Christopher Polem, became a more secure alternative to the prevailing smokehouse and screw locks. These locks had a cast iron body that was loaded with a stack of rotating discs. Each disc had a central cutout to allow the key to pass through them and two notches cut out on the edge of the disc. When locked, the discs passed through cutouts on the shackle. The key rotated each disc until the notches, placed along the edge of each tumbler in different places, lined up with the shackle, allowing the shackle to slide out of the body. The McWilliams Company received a patent for these locks in 1871. The Scandinavian design was so successful that J. H. W. Climax and Company of Newark, New Jersey continued to make these padlocks until the 1950s. Today, other countries are still manufacturing this style of padlock. Contemporary with the Scandinavian padlock, were the cast heart locks, so called because of their shape. A significantly stronger lock than the smokehouse and much more resistant to corrosion than the Scandinavian, the hearts had a lock body sandcast from brass or bronze and a more secure lever mechanism. Heart locks had two prominent characteristics, one was a spring-loaded cover that pivoted over the keyhole to keep dirt and insects out of the lock that was called a drop. The other was a point formed at the bottom of the lock so a chain could be attached to the lock body to prevent the lock from getting lost or stolen. Cast heart locks were very popular with railroads for locking switches and cars because of their economical cost and excellent ability to open reliably in dirty, moist, and frozen environments. Around the 1870s, lockmakers realized they could successfully package the same locking mechanism found in cast heart locks into a more economical steel or brass shell instead of having to cast a thick metal body. These lock shells were stamped out of flat metal stock filled with lever tumblers, and then riveted together. Although more fragile than the cast hearts, these locks were attractive because they cost less. In 1908, Adams and Westlake patented a stamped and riveted switch lock that was so economical that many railroads stopped using the popular cast hearts and went with this new stamped shell lock body design. Many lock manufacturers made this very popular style of lock. In 1877 Yale and Town was granted a patent for a padlock that housed a stack of levers and had a shackle that swung away when unlocked. It was a notable design because the levers were sub-assembled into a cartridge that could be slid into a cast brass body shell. The assembly would remain together by means of two taper pins passed through the shell and cartridge. This design gave the commercial padlock market a serviceable, rekeyable padlock.
About 20 years later Yale made another cartridge-style padlock that employed their famous pin tumbler mechanism and a shackle that slid out of the body instead of swinging away. Although machining metal was a method that was available to lockmakers since the early 19th century, it was not economically feasible to do so until the very early 20th century when electrical generation and distribution became widespread. Some of the earliest padlocks that were made from a machined block of cast or extruded metal resemble today's modern padlock. Corbin and Eagle were one of the first lock makers to machine a solid block of metal and insert a relatively new pin tumbler mechanism and a sliding shackle into the holes machined into the body. This style of padlock was both strong and easy to manufacture. Many machined body padlocks were designed to be disassembled so that locksmiths could easily fit the locks to a certain key. The machined body padlocks are still very popular today. The process of machining allows many modern padlocks to have a shroud covering the shackle, which is an extension of the body around the shackle to protect the shackle from getting sheared or cut. In the early 1920s, Harry Sorf started master lock-off with the first laminated padlock. Plates that were punched from sheet metal were stacked and assembled. Holes that were formed in the middle of the plates made room to accommodate the locking mechanism. The entire stack of plates, loaded with the lock parts in it, was riveted together. This padlock was popular for its low cost and an impact resistant laminated plate design. Today, many lock makers copy this very efficient and successful design. Die casting became popular in the early 1930s among lock makers. Not only was it a very inexpensive way to make padlocks, but it allowed designers to design padlocks with a broad range of geometrical features and ornate designs that sand casting and machining wouldn't allow. Some lock makers, like Junk Kunk Brothers, augmented their machined solid body padlock products with the less expensive and more attractive die cast bodied padlocks. The Wise Lock Company embraced this new medium in making a novel padlock that, with a key inserted, would split lengthwise along the body in order to create an opening in the shackle. Chicago Lock pioneered their new double-bitted wafer and ACE products by installing them into a die-cast body. With the advent of inexpensive machining done overseas and the overall poor perception of the security of die-cast locks, they no longer dominate today's padlock market. Rating Forced entry involves the use of tools such as hammers, bolt cutters, chisels, and drills. Consequently, forced entry attacks exhibit obvious signs of entry. Surreptitious attacks involve picks, bump keys, shims, unauthorized key duplication, and other bypass techniques that, when employed, do not show obvious signs of compromise. A quantitative measure of a padlock's resistance to forced and surreptitious entry can be determined with tests developed by organizations such as ASTM, Sold Secure. CEN, and TNO. Components A padlock is composed of a body, shackle, and locking mechanism. The typical shackle is a U shaped loop of metal that encompasses what is being secured by the padlock. Generally, most padlock shackles either swing away or slide out of the padlock body when in the unlocked position. Less common designs include a straight, circular, or flexible shackle. Some shackles split apart and come together to lock and unlock. There are two basic types of padlock locking mechanisms, integrated and modular. Integrated locking mechanisms directly engage the padlock's shackle with the tumblers. Examples of integrated locking mechanisms are rotating discs or lever tumblers. Padlocks with integrated locking mechanisms are characterized by a design that does not allow disassembly of the padlock. They are usually older than padlocks with modular mechanisms and often require the use of a key to lock. The more modern modular locking mechanisms, however, do not directly employ the tumblers to lock the shackle. Instead, they have a plug within the cylinder that, with the correct key, turns and allows a mechanism, referred to as a locking dog to retract from notches cut into the shackle. Padlocks with modular locking mechanisms can often be taken apart to change the tumblers or to service the lock. Modular locking mechanism cylinders frequently employ pin, wafer, and disc tumblers. Padlocks with modular mechanisms are usually automatic, or self-locking. Combination locks Combination locks do not use keys. Instead, 
the lock opens when its wheels are lined up correctly to display the correct combination. Padlock icon symbolizing a secure web transaction. While executing secure transactions on the web, the submitted information is encrypted using a public key cryptography. Some web browsers display a locked padlock icon while using such a secure protocol. Wikipedia also uses this icon on its protected pages. See also, Pin Tumblr Lock, Kent Police Museum home of the world's largest working padlock. References External links, inventors.about.com History of Locks, Lock Forum's discussion on locks.